Welcome to the video everyone, today we're taking a look at Luminar Neo, the latest piece of editing software from Skylum. Unfortunately, that means I kind of have to put you down. So, what is Luminar Neo? Well, straight off the bat, when Neo was announced, there were people who were critical, questionable about Skylum as to why were they releasing these new features in a brand new piece of software rather than just introduce them as an update to Luminar AI, which isn't that old. I did put this question to Skylum and was given two reasons why. The first is the software engine. For some of these new features that are in, in Neo, it requires 3D depth mapping to work. And apparently the engine in Luminar AI just couldn't handle it. So they had to design a brand new, much more powerful engine and build Neo around that. The second reason is Luminar Neo is not a replacement to AI, apparently. It's a separate piece of software with a different philosophy entirely. Skylum C AI for, uh, as more for beginner, uh, beginner editors who aren't entirely comfortable with it and want a lot of help from the software, whereas Neo is targeted more to the prof more experienced and professional editors who know what they want and just using the AI to help them get that quicker. And you can sort of see this in the interface. When you look at the interface of Luminar AI, along the top you've got basically everything running in sequence as to how they want you to, to use the software. You've got import, obviously bring the picture into the software, then templates, which is like presets, where the software will scan the picture, work out what template it thinks is suitable for the picture that you've that you've given it, i.e. is it a landscape, is it a portrait, etc., and give you a selection to choose from. So the template does a lot of the editing for you before you then move into the editing tab and tweak bits up yourself and then onto export. You don't get any of that with Luminar Neo. You've just got your catalog where you import into and then your editing tab and you make all the edits yourself. So there's no templates, there's no presets, there's no nothing like that. So let me show you these new features. Now, I will stress at this point, this is still a, a pre-released version. It's not completed. There are still a few features that I believe are yet to be added, and there's probably going to be some tweaks made to it along the way based on people's feedbacks, etc. So this is not a finalized version. It's not a final review. This is just to show you what these new features are and the overall feel of how Luminar Neo has changed over AI. So when you move into the editing tab, under the tool section, you've got the list of all the tools down the right-hand side. The majority of these, if you've seen Luminar AI, you will be familiar with these. Most of the tools in Neo are found in AI anyway. Firstly, where there are some changes though, is under the arrays tool, there's now a new section called objects removals. And there's two options, remove power lines and remove dust spots. And both of these are exactly what they sound like. Remove power lines. If you've got a shot and there's power lines running across the sky, they can be a bit of a distraction. You might want to remove them. Now, sure, you could use a piece of editing software like Photoshop and you could go in and you can use a clone stamp and paint them all out. But that takes a bit of time. And depending on what you're trying to paint over, it can sometimes be a little bit noticeable. With the remove power lines, you click the button, the, the software will scan the picture, find any power lines and automatically fill them in for you, dead straightforward. The one that I'm more excited about though is remove dust spots because I shoot with a mirrorless camera. The damn things are a bane of my life. Now sure, you could use something like the erase tool in Luminar. You could use Photoshop and use like the spot removal tool, but you've got to go through and individually pick every single dust spot. It takes a while. Now, this picture has dust spots, they're not that clear. If I go into structure and ramp that up to 100, you can now start to see the dust spots come into play. If I then click remove dust spots, it's gonna cycle through for a few seconds saying that it's removing, but it will scan the picture, it will locate what it sees as dust spots, and then it will remove them. Couldn't ask for more really, could you? So something like that, Fantastic, because it's something you're going to do anyway. 
you know, you're not going to leave dust spots in a picture. You are going to remove them, but the software just does it for you just to speed things up. Next, we have Relight. Now, this is a big one that's got a lot of people excited. Say you've got a picture like this. It's got a bright sky. It's got a dark foreground. You want to even them out a little bit. Sure, you could use something like your highlights and your shadows tools. They've been around for uh, forever and a day. Pull down the highlights, you ramp up the shadows. Great. Not always brilliant, though, because they're universal. They just work uniformly across the entire frame. So if I pull down the highlights to, to darken up the sky, if there's any highlights in the foreground, they'll also get clamped down as well. Conversely, if I raise the shadows to brighten up the, the shaded area of the foreground, any, sh any shaded areas that are in the background are also going to get brightened, and you may not want that. What Relight does is it utilizes this 3D depth mapping that I mentioned at the start. So when you load a picture in, the software engine in the background will look at any picture you, you upload and is going to try and work out how far the various subjects in the picture are from the camera, nearest to furthest. So in doing that, when it's then trying to relight a scene, it can target which parts of the picture is going to make brighter or darker. So for example, in this shot, I want to raise up the brightness in the foreground, but it's not going to impact the brightness in the background. Likewise, if I wanted to bring down the brightness in the background, if I bring it down a lot, it's also starting to, to darken these rocks as well, which I don't want. But I can use this depth slider and move that all the way out into the distance. So now we've ended up with a brighter foreground than a darker background. Obviously, tweaking that as you go. Now, the last new feature, at least that's available in the pre-release, is the History tab. And this, I think, could be a game changer. Now, History tabs are nothing new. Photoshop's got a History tab. You make a load of changes, and then you realize that earlier on you've made a mistake. You can use the History tab to jump back to that point to correct your mistake. Great. The problem is with the Photoshop setup is it's sequential. So every edit sits on top of the next one. And I've fallen foul to this so many times. I've done a load of edits and then realized that actually somewhere near the start, made a mistake, not happy with it, wanted to tweak it. If I then roll all the way back to that point, everything else is subsequently lost and I've got to do it all again. Or... I don't roll back, but then spend a load of additional time trying to edit out the error that I'd made earlier on. The history setup in Neo is a little bit different. So let, let me take this picture, for example, that I took of um, Aber Falls last year. And I'm going to do a couple of quick edits to it, nothing major, but I'm going to put a bit of contrast in. I'm going to pull down the highlights a little bit to try and darken up the sky. I'm going to go into the enhance and use the sky enhancer to really bring the sky down a bit more. And then we're going to ramp in some structure. And then I'm going to put in a bit of vignette. And then I'm going to use the landscape, the foliage enhancer, just to make them greens pop a little bit. And then I'm going to use the color and I'm going to pull down the vibrance overall. Now, side note at this point, I've just made a load of changes in the Essentials tab. If I go back into any one of those now, say the Development tab, everything's set back to zero. Every single one. Even though I've made a load of changes to it, everything's set back to zero. That's because what's happening now is every time I, I make changes to a tab and then close the tab, those changes go into... The history line. So if I now go into history here, I can see all the changes that I made in order, development, enhanced structure, vignette, landscape. But now I've decided that actually there's too much structure there. I want to change it. I'm not happy with it. If this was Photoshop, I'd click back on structure. It's going to roll back all the other changes that I've made. It's going to take me to structure. And sure, I can change structure now. So I could, I could take out the structure if I wanted, or I could say, actually, I'm going to leave the structure, but I just want to localize it to round this rock here in the foreground. So I don't want it interfering with everything else as well. It's now made those changes, but if I then click back on the top of the history list, 
all the other changes that I'd made following that structure, the vignette, the landscape, the color changes, they're all still there as well. So I don't lose any of the other edits that I make. I can go back to a picture at any point and alter something I've done previously without jeopardizing everything else as well. The only... Uh, it's a hiccup. The only limitation I found with this is if I, say, wanted to go very early back to the development tab. When I then click back into development, everything else that I'd subsequently done gets uh, gets turned off, essentially. I can't see the rest of the effects that have been, have been made. If I'm looking at that and deciding, actually, the highlights, I, I don't want the highlights to be as squashed. Okay, I can go back to development and I can take the highlights back up. But I'm now working on the view at the time that I did development. Since then, I've done the Sky Enhancer, which has also added some changes to the sky as well. So I don't really know what what changes just adjusting the highlights now is going to have until I then click back to the top of the history list and all the other changes get applied back on as well. So... It's not the end of the world, but what I actually end up doing is rather than going into the history tab and making changes to the settings in the history tab, I actually wind up normally resetting whatever one I'm not happy with and doing it again. So if I say development, I'm not happy with the development, I can just reset the development, click back on color, so all the other changes go back on now. I can go back into tools, click back on development, and then when I'm making adjustments now, those adjustments are in real time. So you get a better perspective, if you like, as to what impact these changes are having on the final picture, rather than having to make changes from an earlier stage and then add everything back on. But overall, I'm really liking some of these new features from AI. The dust spots, godsend. The relight tool is going to be handy in some really badly lit situations. The history tab for me is a big one because it's just going to make being able to go back and make corrections so much easier. Anyway, that is a tour of the pre-release version. Once the finalized version is released, I can, I can do a more thorough review of how well it performs. But so far, at least, quite impressed by these new features. So... Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below while you're down there. If you found this video helpful and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe button and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.